Hi, I'm Leah Applegard, pre-calculus teacher, and today we are going over um, section 1.1 from our textbook. It's the, so my students, I'm having you use the Cornell Notes heading and format for your notes. So today's topic is section 1.1, the distance and midpoint formulas, graphing utilities, an introduction to graphing equations. I want your name, my name, pre-calculus, today's date, and the learning objectives, which you can find at the beginning of the section. But for our case, um, it's in the unit plan. All right, so we have these seven learning objectives. We're gonna use the distance formula, use the midpoint formula, graph equations by hand by plotting points, graph equations using a graphing utility, use a graphing utility to create tables, find intercepts from a graph, and use a graphing utility to approximate intercepts. All right, so this is section 1.1. It is a review a little bit of Algebra 2 and mostly Algebra 1. Um, you don't have to write this down unless you totally cannot remember. Um, the x-axis is our horizontal, our y-axis is our vertical, and the, where they cross is our origin. Um, this is called a rectangular or a Cartesian coordinate system. Do not write this down. Um, when we plot a point, we track it by giving a value horizontally and a value vertically. Um, and we do that by writing it as an ordered pair. Our x's go first, our y's go second. I know, it's it potentially could have been a long time since you've seen it. It's good to review and hear it out loud. Um, this might be information that I would put down because I forget this. This is not something I talk about um, in my everyday life. The x coordinate is sometimes called an abscissa, abscissa, and the y coordinate is sometimes called an ordinate. So that was not inherent knowledge that I carried with me. So I would definitely write that in my notes. Just in case you see it on a standardized test, you can say, oh, that sounds right to me. Um, the way you can remember it is abscissa comes before A comes before O in the alphabet, X comes before Y in the alphabet. So if you have to make a decision between abscissa and ordinate, go abscissa. That's alphabetized the same way as X and Y are alphabetized, first and second. Um, no need to write this down. This is also just a review. So remember when you're plotting points, the x coordinate goes first, so you go, in the case of 6, 4, you go horizontally 6 units and vertically 4 units. When you get into negative land, so negative 3, negative 5, you would go left 3 units and down 5 units. 0, 7 would be over 0 units and up 7 would keep you on the y-axis. And then our last negative six zero would be negative six on the x axis and zero on the y. Okay, this one I want you to write down. Put this in your notes. So just put a little T. And um, I remember this because we start in our x is positive, y is positive quadrant gets to get be called number one. So quadrant one is when x is positive and y is positive, and then it goes counterclockwise. Um, and then usually everything we do will be counterclockwise in this course, so it's easy to remember. Quadrant one starts top right, then it goes quadrant two is top left, quadrant three is bottom left, and quadrant four is bottom right. Take it around channel. Alright, makes sense. A quadrant, 
quad is the root word. Welcome to English. The root the word root of for quad is four. There are four quadrants, which is why it's called a quadrant. All right. So um, if you're using a graphing calculator or a computer software um, to graph equations, they do so by plugging a whole bunch of numbers into the equation you input and giving you a picture. So it's nothing magical. It's not um, wizardry. They just um, are plotting points. So when you're looking at, don't, don't write this down. Um, when you're looking at a graphing utility, it will display coordinates of a rectangular coordinate system. So x coordinates are on the horizontal, y coordinates are on the vertical. And it usually looks like this for a graphing calculator. All right, so we have the option to set the scale on each axis. You have to, when you set your scale, you include the smallest value and the largest value for X and Y. And that's called the viewing rectangle or the viewing window. So if, um, you're, if you display a graph and it's not showing you the things you want, you know where your intercepts are, you know where the values you want to identify are, you can go back to your window and change your X min, X max, and your scale to fit what you want it to fit. So these ones, I am actually not going to have you write this down because it's pretty inherent. X min is the minimum x value you're going to have. X max is the maximum x value that's going to be displayed. Your scale is what it's going to count by. If you care about from negative 1,000 to positive 1,000, you don't want to count by once. So you want to think about, oh, maybe I'll count by a or by 500. You want to make sure your scale so you can see the detail that you're desiring in your problem. You want to make sure your scale matches um, your numeric values. So you can access this by pressing the window button on your graphing calculator. Alright, so if you're completely messed up on your window, you can go to your zoom and either zoom fit you can create a zoom box where you drop, um, draw a box over the area you want to zoom in on. Or I like to zoom standard, which takes everything back to negative 10, positive 10, counting by ones, and centers your graph again. So on your, on your coordinate, it'll show you for here, our y max is 2, if we're counting by 1s. Our y min is negative 2. Um, our y scale is how many are between each tick mark. And it's should be pretty inherent. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, find the coordinates of the point shown. Assume the coordinates are integers. So because our y scale is, we're counting by twos, this coordinate is actually, and then the x scale is counting by one, two, three. So the x scale is counting by ones. So this is at negative two comma two. So now we're going to work on our distance formula. So on your paper, go ahead and write distance formula. Okay, so if you're looking at, and if you ever forget the distance formula, which, you know, later down on in your life, um, you may forget it, it's okay. Uh, what, what it is is essentially the Pythagorean theorem. So if I want to find the distance between two points, we find, we just make a nice little right triangle, and I know that from one to five is four units, from three to six is three units, 
So if I want to find the distance, I just go 4 squared plus 3 squared square root. And that's where the distance formula comes from. So the square root of 25 is 5. Don't write this down again. This is just where it comes from. So this is the distance formula. You subtract the x's or you find the distance between the x coordinates and you square it. Then you find the distance or subtract the y coordinates and you square it. Add those two values together and take the square root. And that will give you the distance between two points. So here's um, here's a proof of the distance formula. Do not write this down. So if I have two points anywhere on my Cartesian coordinate system, x1 and y1, and then x2 and y2 is our second point, so we are going to find the distance between our first x value and our second x value. And we do that by taking the absolute value of our two coordinates subtracted. Why do we have to take an absolute value? Right, you cannot do the square root with the negative numbers, but that's like telling the end of the Star Wars movie. Um, a spoiler alert, if we, if we didn't know what the end result was, is it possible to have a negative distance? No, no, no. So when we're talking distances, so we're saying I'm saying the distance between the x coordinates cannot be less than zero. So we got to throw the absolute values around um, that calculation to make sure that we're staying true to the real world. So we take those two distances because we have a right triangle. We know that our leg squared plus our leg squared is equal to our hypotenuse squared. So that's all that's happened here. Our distance between point 0.1 and point 0.2 squared is equal to our horizontal distance squared and our vertical distance squared. We take, so we substitute that in x2 minus x1 squared. We can dump the absolute value because what does square do to a negative value? It'll make it positive. So we, for the sake of simplicity, we trade out the absolute value for parentheses. And then we take the square root of both sides because this was a distance squared. So just to get the straight up distance, we take the square root. Now, if I just have a horizontal, I know sometimes you end up going, oh man, two points and then throw it in the distance formula. But remember, if you have a horizontal line segment, just find the difference between the x values. Because the y value is going to give you zero. It's going to zero itself out every time. Same with the, um, if you have a vertical line segment, just find the difference of the y's. Think we, we want to work smarter, not harder. Yes, this is distance formula stuff, but if you can quickly get the distance then please go ahead and do it by subtracting versus using the distance formula. All right, so write this down on your paper. Find the distance d between the points 2 comma negative 4 and negative 1 comma 3. So this is our application. We put it in our notes so that we know how to use the distance formula. If you are, are writing this near your original distance formula. You don't have to rewrite the distance formula, but I'm putting it on this slide to make sure that we stay on track with the formula. All right, so we are going to put our x2 first minus our x1. So that would be negative 1 minus 2 squared, and then our y2, which is 3, minus negative 4 which is our y, y1. 
and we're going to square it. The hardest part about using the distance formula is keeping your positives and negatives the way they need to be. Minus a negative is plus, so this will end up being 3 plus 4. This is minus 1, sorry, negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. So you're, we're going to get negative 3 squared plus 7 squared. And then go ahead and the next order of operation would be to take care of those exponents. Three, negative 3 squared is 9 and 7 squared is 49. Add those two together and I get 58. If you were being asked for the exact answer, you would stop here at square root of 58. If you were going to be asked an approximate answer, you go ahead and do the calculation and get approximately 7.62. Watch for them to, if they're telling you to round to the nearest hundredth, round to the nearest hundredth. So write this problem down in your notes. We're going to consider points A, B, and C. So what we did by using the distance formula was an algebra 1 skill. What we're going to do now is using the same skill elevated to more of an algebra 2 skill. So we're going to have three points, and we're going to plot each point. So go ahead and put an X and a Y axis, because we're going to plot them, um, and form a triangle. We're going to find the length of each side of the triangle. So if you can throw a shape onto your coordinate system, we can then find distances. And when we know the lengths of the sides, what can we then find for the shape? What's some other stuff? What's some other stuff we do with shapes? <coughs> if I have a triangle, what do you usually do with a triangle? In math, not in real life. Find the area. So, if I if I can and can I use the distance formula to find the details of my shape so that I can find other things like area? Yes. So that's that's where we're leading up to. Okay. So go ahead and draw this plot on your paper. Okay, so the distance from A to B, all I need to do is plug in my x2 minus x1, square it, my y2 minus y1, and square it, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 16 plus 4 is 20, and simplified exact value for 20 is 2 root 5. 20 is 4 times 5. Square root of 4 is 2. So the 2 comes out and the 5 goes in the middle. I'll say that again because I'm on the corner. Um, so the distance from B to C is 3 minus 2, which is x2 minus x1. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Uh, and then y2, which is 1, minus y1, which is 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, leaving the distance from b to c to be the square root of 5. And cats out of the bag, we don't even need to use the distance formula to find that the distance from a to c is 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. But the distance formula will get you there just as well. Do not write the distance formula down. It's okay just to write the past. Verify the triangle is a right triangle. So if it's a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared would equal c squared. So 2 root 5 squared plus root 5 squared would have to equal 5 squared.
squared. And this is 20. This is 5. It equals 25, which is equal to our hypotenuse squared. Lastly, but not leastly, find the area of the triangle. Area is 1 half base times height. We know if it's a right triangle, we know that the base is one leg and the height is the other leg. So it's a 1 half, 2 root 5 times root 5. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10, and half of 10 is 5. All right, so we're transitioning from distance formula to midpoint formula. I find the midpoint formula mega easy. The hardest thing they're going to do for a midpoint formula is to give you the midpoint and ask you to find one of your endpoints. Um, but that's mega easy. So the midpoint is halfway from one point to the next. Here's the proof of the midpoint. Don't write this down. Because it's not necessary for your understanding. What is necessary is that you know, and it makes sense inherently, that halfway from point one to point two would be your x coordinates divided by two would give you the x value that's halfway, and your y coordinates divided by two will give you your y halfway on your y values. So it's like finding the average of your coordinates. So x1 plus x2 divided by 2 will give you the x coordinate of your midpoint. y1 plus y2 divided by 2 will give you the y coordinate of your midpoint. Please remember the midpoint formula gives you coordinates. The distance formula gives you one value. Sometimes it's easy to confuse the two. Okay, so to practice this, we're going to find the midpoint of the line segment P1 equals 4 comma negative 2 to P2 equals 2 comma negative 5. If I'm putting this in my notes, I, I put in find the midpoint and I just write coordinate 4 comma negative 2 and 2 comma negative 5. I just, so just the find the midpoint and just the coordinates. Uh, we're going to plot the points and their midpoint. Well, that'll be fine. Okay, so the, our x coordinate for our midpoint is our x values added and then divided by 2. 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Our y coordinate is our y values added, negative 2 plus negative 5, which is negative 7 and divided by 2. It is not divisible evenly by 2, so we keep it as negative 7 halves. So now we plot that <clears throat> just to make sure we get a visual. So 4 negative 2 is here, and 2 negative 5 is here, and halfway is over 3 down 3.5. All right, so graphing equations by hand, by plot and points. So putting in an x coordinate and getting out a y coordinate, um, also known as making a t table. Um, don't write this down. Equation in two variables. So you're usually going to have an x and a y. And you're going to have to graph it. If you want to use your graphing calculator, we press y equals and or um, the y equals tab. So guess what we have to do to all of our equations in order to put it into a graphing calculator? We have to solve it for y. Now, if you use a um, computer utility like Desmos, you don't have to solve for Y. 
Um, so to, de to determine whether points are on a graph, we plug in the x and y coordinates and we see if we get a true statement. All right, so we're writing this down. If I wanted to see if 0, 4 is a point on my graph, I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 4 for y and see if I get a true statement. Negative uh, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4, and 4 is not equal to 6. So A is not on our graph. B. Negative 3 times negative 2, because we put negative 2 in for x, is positive 6. Uh, plus 0 is equal to 6. And that is a point on our graph. We plug in negative 3 for x, so negative 3 times negative 3 is 3. And you add 3 to that, that is 6. So b and c are points on our graph. And if you look, Here's our line, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, comma 3. All right, so if we're going to graph this by plotting points, we're going to make a little table. And I want you guys to make a little table, too. So we're going to graph y equals 2x plus 5. So we have our x values, and if I were graphing, I wouldn't put if and then, I would put x and y, and then point. Um, so if x is equal to 0, we plug 0 into our equation, and we get out 5. And our point that we're going to plot is 0, 5. If x is equal to 1, I put 1 into my equation. I get 2 plus 5 is 7, so my coordinate is 1, 7 etc, etc. I plot my points and I connect my dots. Easy, right? Algebra 1 skill. Alright, so if we're going to graph an equation y equals x squared, we make a little xy. Um, if I'm doing this, so this is me, I would go from negative 2 to positive 2. I wouldn't include the other coordinates. Um, and then plot the points on the graph, connect the dots, it's a nice parabola shape. You guys feel confident on that? Okay. Alright, so doing the same thing if you use your graphing calculator. What all this says is that you have to have your fu your function, your equation in y equals form, which is really easy. <coughs> so if I have 3x plus 5 equals y, I want to make sure I go y equals 3x plus 5. Um, simplify the sides of the equation by combining like terms, eliminating parentheses, and so on. So check this guy out. So I solve to get 2y plus 8 equals 7x plus 5, then I would subtract 8 and divide by 2. Add or subtract the same expressions on both sides of the equation. So if you look, this minus 5 equals 4. I would move that guy over there so it's 9. And then to get y equals, I'd subtract 3x. Multiply or divide both sides by the same non-zero expression. In this case, we're dividing by 3 multiplying by one half. So we get one third parenthesis six minus two x. All right, this is our example. This is the meat and potatoes. We have two x plus two y plus three x minus five equals four. We replace the original equation by a succession of equivalent equations. So we add five to both sides, we subtract 3x from both sides to get 2y equals 9 minus 3x. Then we divide by 2 to get 9 minus 3x divided by 2. If I'm putting this in my calculator, I would definitely go parentheses 
9 minus 3x, close parenthesis, divided by 2. Don't put that parenthesis on there. The 2 is only going to apply to the minus 3x. Joshua. Why not just put the half of 9 and 3, so just 4.5 minus 4.5x? You can. That's also an equivalent statement. Okay, and if I have a squared term on my x, it doesn't change anything. I'm still solving for y, and I put y equals negative 2x squared plus 12. Nice little parabola. Um, it goes in your y equals area. Make sure you pick an initial viewing window. I always go zoom standard, which is if you press zoom and then zero, it'll take you to zoom standard. From negative 10 to positive 10, counting by ones. You look at the graph and I am missing the little top half here. So I need to change that. Boop. If I make, make, have it include 12, then I can see the nice vertex. <coughs> All right, so to create a table, if you look at your graphing calculator, it's actually got a button that says table right at the top. And it will take your, I like the table because sometimes on a graph, it's hard to tell exactly what the numbers are doing. If you go to the table, you can look at the X and Y coordinates that you're actually graphing and pull useful information from that. So once again, you have to solve for y in order to use your graphing utility. Put the equation in your graphing calculator. Um, your table should be in auto mode, and it will be. So that's in table setup. Um, the, you can set up when you want your table to start and how you want your table to count. Sometimes you want your table, table to count by Point five or point one, so you can see where it's going and, and hit the right numbers. Um, other times you might want to count by pies, like one pi or two pi. So you, you have the ability to control that. And then create your table. It'll give you your x values and your y values. You can arrow up and down to find them. Finding intercepts from a graph. Um, when I ask you to find the intercepts, it's going to be a coordinate. So make sure you put parentheses, the x value, a comma, and the y value. When you type it into your quiz, do not put spaces. All the quizzes I give you do not have space in between the answers that you're submitting. So like I'm asking you go from left to right and list your intercepts. So then you would go this intercept first, you'd go parentheses, X coordinate, comma, Y coordinate, close parenthesis, comma. So separate them by comma. Um, so just follow the instructions on the quiz. But all you have to do is find the coordinate of where it crosses the X axis or the Y axis. Make sure if it's an intercept, one of those values has to be zero. Otherwise, it's not an intercept. So if I was writing, if, if I, when I create your quizzes and I say, um, <coughs> give me your values from left to right, I would go this one first and probably go this, 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 although this is not what your test question is. Um, so it'll go here. I would go this one, this one, this one. So you wouldn't follow the line? No. I'd probably just go. And um, your, you can use your tools on your calculator to find the intercepts. So there's a calc button. You press that calc button, you press intercept, and it'll take you right there. All right, so if we're trying to find the intercepts of y equals x cubed minus 16, so go ahead and put that in your calculator.
it gives us a nice little cubic function here. And I know I have an intercept here, and I know I have one here. Okay, so now we are, um, if we let x equal 0, so you put in, if you type in 0, so we can find that x equals 0, y equals negative 16, and we have one more intercept to find. And we can use the zero feature to find the x-intercept, round it to do two decimal places. So if you go to calculate again, grab the intercept, or the zero, sorry, grab zero, arrow to the left of where we cross the x-axis, hit enter, arrow to the right of where we cross the x-axis, hit enter, and it'll tell you that. 2.52. So go ahead and take a moment and do that on your graphing calculator. And that's the end of our skill set for today. Let's get some practice done.